What are the latest and most effective treatments for herpes and what are the treatments you should avoid? Stick around to find out more. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Lane from Adelaide, South Australia, and if you haven't seen some of my other videos on genital herpes, check them out, I'm putting some links in the description below. Now just to recap, genital and oral herpes is caused by a virus called HSV, stands for the herpes simplex virus. And the reason it can be such a nuisance for people is because once you've been exposed to it, it can lay dormant in your system and then reactivate at any time, particularly at times when you're run down, stressed, or Murphy's Law, when you have something really important to attend, like like a wedding. But don't panic because there's some really good treatments out there. Now full disclosure, everything in this video should be considered as general advice. You should always talk to your own doctor about the most appropriate treatments for you. Okay, so when you look at the management options for herpes, you can kind of split them into two groups, treatment and prevention. Let's start with treatment. How do you treat an acute outbreak of herpes? Well, first of all, make sure it is herpes. In other words, if you've never been diagnosed, I'd be chatting to your doctor pretty quick smart because the treatment will vary depending on the diagnosis. Now, the most accurate way to diagnose herpes is with a swab. But that said, health professionals working in sexual health are pretty good at making a diagnosis based on history and examination alone. And they'll often even start you on some medication before you get the swab results back. Now, if you have had herpes diagnosed before and this outbreak is typical of what you've had previously, then generally you just start the treatment straight away. So the only treatment that has proven to both reduce the length of a herpes outbreak and reduce the severity of the outbreak is antiviral therapy. Now, obviously you can take pain relief like ibuprofen and paracetamol to reduce discomfort, but antivirals are the only thing that actually attack the herpes virus and help your immune system to fight it. And there is good evidence behind the use of antiviral therapy. In one study, for example, people who took an antiviral medication within 12 hours of an outbreak were shown to have a faster healing time by up to two days compared with those who took a placebo. There's also been evidence that if you're taking antiviral medication, it reduces the amount of viral shedding from your skin, which means you're less likely to spread the infection to somebody else. Now there are typically three antiviral medications that work for herpes, acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir. Typically you do need a doctor's prescription to obtain these, but depending on where you live in the world, you might be able to get them from a pharmacist directly. The other option for managing herpes is what we call suppressive therapy. Now suppressive therapy involves taking the same antiviral medications that you would take to treat an outbreak, but at a much lower dose and for an extended period of time. By doing this, you're keeping the virus under control and making it less likely for an outbreak to occur. But that doesn't mean because you've had one outbreak of herpes that you should immediately jump into suppressive therapy. Not everybody who carries the herpes virus will have regular outbreaks. But if you are getting multiple flare-ups in a year or you might be immunocompromised due to another condition like HIV infection, then suppressive therapy might be a good option for you. Now one treatment you should avoid in general herpes is antiviral creams or ointments. What the hell? I've just said that antivirals work well, and they do if taken orally, but not when they're applied topically. In fact, research shows that using antiviral ointments may actually have a negative effect because over time it can lead to viral resistance. In other words, the virus builds up an immunity to the antiviral medication, and that's not good. The other treatments you may have heard of are things like lysine, and then there are lots of scams on social media promoting the use of herbal medications and vitamins to try to cure herpes. I assure you there is no evidence behind any of this, and my advice, don't waste your money. Now, if you haven't already, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. I'm putting a link to one of these on the screen right now. Please consider subscribing to my channel, and if you like the video, let me know by clicking the button.